Hey guys, it's Arcade and today I'm gonna show you how to make Happy Hardcore or Hardstyle. It's probably like UK Hardcore, I think. Basically, how to make music similar to Stonebank, for example. And here's the project I'm going to show you how to make. I know it can seem daunting at first, but I'm gonna go over all the sounds and all the elements of the projects and all the effects. So I'm gonna show you how you can make it as well. Also, this video is brought to you by Skillshare. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about them later. So yeah, I'm gonna try to explain everything as best as I can. And let's get started with the first thing, which is the BPM, and it's about 170. So it's pretty fast, but that's what I'm working with, with this song. So to start this off, I think best thing to start is with the chords, or what I like to call them is power leads. And here's the ones that I've made. So you want to go with some simple bass notes. And you don't even need to create the chords. I actually just added one more octave of different notes here. So we have that harmony there. Now to do this, you can basically do it this way. Let me just delete these and show you. You can just copy your bass notes on top of the bass notes you already have and hold control arrow up to put them octave up, maybe even two octaves. And then hold shift and go one, two, three, four, four up, you know. So you have these notes. And this one is sort of off. And if you find that one of them is sort of off, you just put it one key down. So yeah, I don't know the exact music theory explanation, but you are basically playing half of the chord pretty much. So the chord would be this, but you are only playing these two notes and then putting them octave up, which results in really nice harmony for the lead. Now for the sound, I'm gonna show you how to create the sound right now. So let me just clone this sound put the same notes in there and I'm gonna initialize the preset and remove the effects for now. So here's the sound without the effects. And here's our initialized preset. So yeah, I wanna show you how to make this. It's really simple. Oscillator one, put it on eight voices and oscillator two as well and detune both of them. And also put them octave down, both of them. And that is pretty much the sound. One more thing I do, which I got this tip from Stonebank himself, is automate the envelope for the pitch A and B, and just lower the sustain all the way down, and everything is all the way down, but put the decay a little bit up. This makes that plucky click in the beginning of the sound. And yeah, that is pretty much how you make the sound. And then we put on the effects on it. So let me show you the effects right here. So we have a lot of reverb, a lot of reverb, which uh, is pretty important in hardstyle or hardcore. So the K is at 4.4 seconds. Dryness is 61%, reverb 28%. Also played with the low cut, so the low frequencies of the reverb don't go through. And that sounds like this. Then we have EQ, which where I delete all the low frequencies. Pretty simple. We don't need them. Then we have another EQ where I boosted the high frequencies. And then I have Maximus here, which is sort of for compression. And I think I used the NI compression preset and just lowered some of these. And then after the sound ends, the reverb still has this huge power because of the compression. 
I also have Kickstart on there, which is basically sign chaining. You can also use Grossbeat for that with the sign chain preset or any other sign chaining you prefer. I used Kickstart here. And yeah, let me delete this one. Just keep the original one. And that's our sound there. That's the power lead, which will add a lot of frequencies into the drop. So here's the drop. Okay, now let's take a look at the melody. Now, if you want to learn more about how to make the melodies, check out our sponsor today, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is a platform where you can learn more new skills of all kinds, including music production and music theory. So if we take a look here, I'm just gonna search for music theory. And we can see a bunch of full classes that will teach you everything you need to know about music theory. And if you want to learn more about how to make chords and melodies, this would be a great place to start. One of my favorite classes, if we search for piano, is Play Piano by Ear by Kaiwen F. And this one is the best one if you want to learn how to make melodies that are in your head and you want to sort of transfer them into your do or into your song. So yeah, that's why I really like this class because it's probably the most useful if you want to make melodies just on the spot. So yeah, check it out, link below in the description, and the first thousand people who click the link will get a 30 day free trial, so you can watch this class for free. And then if you want to continue your subscription, it can cost as low as $10 a month. So yeah, make sure to get your free trial, learn music theory from people who actually know a lot about it, and you can get these full classes right there. So yeah, that's it for our sponsor today. Now let's get back to the video. So I'm going to show you how to make the sound of the melody, and then I'm going to give you a few tips on how to make the actual melody. So I know I'm not making this from scratch completely, like other tutorials, but this would be really hard to make live because I don't have as much experience with this style, so I would make a lot of mistakes. That's why I decided to already have the song ready and only show you how I made it, but I'm still going to try to explain everything in detail. So yeah, keep on watching. I'm going to show you how to make this lead sound. And I'm going to preview it first. Here's how it sounds. So yeah, that's the sound and I'm going to show you how to make it. Also in the song, we have a few automations for it. So it sounds even more epic. So yeah, you can hear these automations right here. So I'm going to show you how to make those as well. So yeah, let's get started with the sound. Again, I'm going to clone the silence that I already have. And it's this sound we are going to make. So let me just initialize the preset and remove the effects from this sound for now. Without the effects, it sounds like this. So the effects are pretty important. So here is the initialized preset. If you have silent one, you can follow along. So here is how we're going to make the sound. So have oscillator one enabled, change the filter type to band pass, change the resonance right about here, drive about here. Now do the same that we did in the first sound where we automate the envelope, basically the envelope will affect the pitch of the sound. So we have pitch AB, lower the sustain, make the decay longer and move this knob as well. That affects how much the pitch will actually affect it. Then enable distortion, change it to clip, make the amount high. And this is the sound pretty much. One more thing, we can also automate the LFO pitch, A and B, and change the rate. And then we're gonna automate the gain and change the rate higher.
And that's about it. So we're going to automate that in the song. As you can see, I automated it here where I change the gain. So I automate this gain every time I want that vibrato or something like that. And we also automate the filter cutoff, which sort of changes the sound. So it sort of talks to us. So those are the two automations we can play with in the song. It really makes a huge difference for the sound. So yeah, let's do that. And that's all you need for the sound in silence. Actually, one more thing, really important, I forgot, is to enable the portamento as well in legato. So we have these slide notes. Otherwise, we wouldn't have them. But with it. So yeah, really important to have that enabled as well. You can make some crazy effects with that. So yeah, that's the sound in silent. And now let's take a look at the effects. There's a lot of them as well. So let me mute all of them, but the first one. And first one is Saturn, which is saturation. And I just have the drive all the way up, change it to clean tape, which adds a lot more grit to the sound. We found it. Not a huge difference, but adds a little bit more grit. Then we have EQ. I made the frequencies around 600 higher. Again, a lot of these tips are from Stonebank. And you can actually automate this as well if you want to. But yeah, this frequency really works well in the song. Then I have Wave Shaper sort of made this distortion. And I choose one of the presets here. I choose the fuzzy, fuzzy saturator preset. And that adds a little bit like this little thing underneath the sound. Makes it more distorted, which is really nice. Then we have reverb on it. Again, a lot of reverb. Decay at 4.6, reverb at 31. In hardstyle or hardcore, you really want a lot of reverb in that drop. It just sort of creates this huge space and makes everything sound more epic. And so yeah, that's reverb right there. I'm using the default FL Studio reverb, the first one. If you don't have it, go to more plugins and find it here. I don't know why, but I still prefer this one for some reason. Then we have EQ, where I just delete the low frequencies because we don't need the low frequencies for the lead. Then we have transient processor, where I increase the attack, so we have more of a plucky sound. You can see it here. Then I have Maximus again. Just sort of playing around with some of the presets here. And, you know, giving it some power and making sure it doesn't like jump out is compressed. And yeah, again, I have Kickstart on it, which is uh, sign chaining. And one thing I forgot to mention for sign chaining, I have this one right here, which is like a really short one, but I also lowered the mix. So it's not as uh, obvious in the mix. You don't want the sign chain to be super obvious, but it still needs to be there for the bass. So yeah, that's the lead sound. Um, so let me delete this one. So we have the original only. Then we have another lead to layer it. Same effects, but this one is uh, basically the same lead. This one is basically the same lead, but one thing I changed is added eight voices here and two voices in oscillator two. And I detuned the first one. And both of them are octave higher. So that's pretty much the only difference there. And it creates this detuned lead, which goes nicely with the first one, which is more of a clean lead. Now, next layer is Nexus. You can use anything, but I decided to use Nexus here. Just added some more layers for the sound. So this one. 
So you can use silent or even flex. Just find some more leads that can add a little bit more color to the overall sound. And together they sound like this. For the other two sounds, these ones, the effects stay the same, but I deleted the wave shaper and the southern from there. But other than that, it stays the same. So we have the power leads and our melody, and it sounds like this. Now let's take a look at making the melody, which is a really important part of this. So as far as making melody for me, I already sort of know how to do it by ear, but there are other ways you can try to do it if you are not as experienced. So one of those is helpers scale highlighting automatic, and it shows you basically the scale you are in. But as you can see, it's not 100% accurate. Basically what it says is I'm in A major, and the notes that I can use are the highlighted ones. But you can see me using some of the not highlighted ones as well. So in theory, it would want me to go there. But I think this is way better. So as a beginner, you can definitely use the scale highlighting to your advantage. It will know the key of the track and it will show you the notes you can use but I still prefer to do it on my own based on my ear, basically. But there are a few tips I can give you on how to make these melodies. One of them being a lot of slide notes. So right here, I have a lot of these slide notes. So every time we have two notes playing at the same time, like this, they will slide one into another. Now, another tip that is really important is the length of the notes. A lot of people forget this, but the length makes a huge difference. So right here, if this was longer, it sounds like that. But if we make it shorter, right away has a totally different feel to it. Now, I sort of made this melody really long and it's just because I had a lot of fun times just making the melodies. But when making the melody, make sure you have a start of the melody. And then in the second repetition, which starts here for me, just have something different. You know, you can copy the same thing over twice, but in the second repetition of it, just make sure you add some different note so the listener knows the melody is moving forward. So in this one, it ends like this. And in the second one, it ends like this. So pretty much the same, but like one note is different or something. And it makes a huge difference to the listener. And yeah, again, using a lot of short notes as well. Don't be afraid to add some more notes. Especially since we have this plucky sound. It's a lead, but it also has this plucky sound. We can uh, get away with adding a lot of short notes as well. So yeah. So yeah, that's the melody I created. Uh, make sure to sort of have it playing with the power leads as well when making it. So you know you are on the right track. always have your melody playing with the chords because otherwise you can make a melody and then you realize it doesn't fit to the chords as, at all. So make sure to do that. And yeah, those are the few tips I can give you on making the melodies. Other than that, it's just a lot of experience with making the melodies. So if you make music for a while, you'll get better at this, so don't really worry about it. And as I said, you can check out some classes on music theory or just making melodies in general like the one I recommend on Skillshare. But yeah, that's all the tips I can give you 
for making melodies. That's how I do it pretty much. I just imagine it in my head and then I put it in piano roll. You can also hum it if that helps you. You know, and uh, then just try to emulate what you just hummed. And uh, don't quit until it sounds the way you imagine it in your head. So yeah, that's how to make the melodies. Um, one more thing I already told you about, but make sure to do some automations like the gain or the cutoff. I usually automate the gain upwards where I have these slide notes. Sort of creates this nice effect. So yeah, that's the chorus, the melodies. Now let's get to the bass and the drums, basically, because they go hand in hand. Here is how they sound. So first thing we need is the kick, which is from uh, Vengeance Dubstep Pack. You can use any kick, but it should be like this hard one with this knock on the beginning. So the selection of the kick is definitely important. So make sure you go through a few kicks until you reach one that you really like. And then we have this bass, this hardstyle bass from Kashmir's pack. It's a hardstyle kick. And basically without the effects, it sounds like this. Let me disable the crossfade. This is the kick. And it's the classic hardstyle kick, but I'm not really making hardstyle here. I don't want this kick all the way through the song, like piercing through the song. I just wanted some of it, but but I also wanted to have a melody from it. And if we keep it this way, it would be sort of weird. Sort of short at the beginning. So I do the crossfade, which uh, means it can play endlessly. So it sounds a bit weird by itself, that's why I added this bass as well. But one more thing I did is add EQ on it, delete the low frequencies because I want to have a separate bass for it. And sound goodizer as well, just you know, so make it a bit more obvious in the mix. Then we have this bass, let me just delete the effect here. It sounds like this, it's super harsh, it's from Splice, I just got it for this song, but it doesn't really sound like a hard style bass. Super harsh, but I sort of like the lower frequencies. That's why I used the fundamental bass from my previous video. And basically I deleted the high frequencies and only have the sub bass, but I keep a little bit of the high frequencies as well, but just sort of quiet in the background. So yeah, you could do this with EQ as well, just uh, low pass, making sure you have the low frequencies, or you could do it with Maximus as well, where you disable all the bands apart from the low one. But yeah, I use this fundamental bass from WA production, and it sounds like this. So that's our sub bass basically. And along with the kick, with the normal kick as well. So one more thing that might be a bit unexpected that I did is also sidechain this bass. In uh, hardstyle or hardcore, what I hear is sort of like, it almost sounds like there is this offbeat bass instead of the straight up bass. You know, I sort of wanted this offbeat bass, that's why I put kickstart on it, so it ducks at the beginning of the sound. So it sort of results in this offbeat bass instead of the straight bass. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Then we played all together and we have the drop. I also added this exhaust. And in the second repetition of the drop, I added drop claps and added a hi-hat and a clap. Nothing crazy here. And that's it. 
Now, if we play it, it sounds like this. So yeah, that's the drop right there. I'm gonna show you a few more things I did in the build-up. So we have some fills here. Here's this glitch right here, just from Kashmir spec. Then this short drum fill. This fill. And then these. Like a Prida snare right before the drop. So we have this crazy fill. And the melody starts right before the drop, actually. So yeah, it's a really nice fill. Um, one tip I can give you to make crazy fills is just to combine a lot of different fills and like glitch effects and stuff like that. And they sort of pull in together and create one epic fill. So yeah, really like that. And then I have this build up fill. And some impacts, clubs, and the kick. I really like the kick in the build up. So, it adds a lot of power to the build up. And also in the build up, I introduced the melody already. But not quite the full thing, only the Nexus layers. And so it doesn't have that power. But in the drop, it has that all the power, you know? But in the build up, it's just sort of a in the background. So, yeah, really cool build up, really cool fill. And then the drop hits hard. And if you wanna make your drop hit harder, one thing I did here, as you can see, I automated the master volume. So what I have on the master channel is fruity balance and I automated this volume knob. And every time it's not in the drop, it's lower at 71%. And then when the drop comes, it goes up to 80%. That way you can make sure your buildup is not louder than the drop, which would uh, sort of be anticlimactic. It wouldn't hit as hard. So what you can do is lower the volume of the buildup and make the volume of the drop higher. So that way you always have the drop hit harder. And then I play around with some more melodies here. So you can see right there. What I also did is automate the pitch of the melody. And basically I choose the band range to 12. Make sure the range here is 12 as well and automate the pitch like this. From low to normal. So yeah, you can do those effects as well. Still automating. The gain of the LFO. So a lot of automations happening. That's so the song doesn't get stale. It keeps being interesting. And I also added these crashes here. And yeah, then we end the drop without the bass and the power leads. And we go to the build-up, which I'm not going to talk about much because it's really simple here. Basically the same chords as the power leads, but I actually create a chords here. And I have this piano. Pretty low. It's a Stoneway Revisited from Nexus Epic Collection. I have this offbeat piano as well, like a melody. And then I have these strings. And what I do is automate the volume of the strings to go like this, 
from down, up and down. It sort of creates a nice breathing effect. And that's pretty much the breakdown. Then I introduce the melody, but in a plucky version. Have some sort of a background loop here. Just, just to create this atmosphere. It's actually from my new pack, which will be available soon. It will be the best pack ever. I'm gonna make sure of that. And I also added this bass as well. Yeah, that's our build up right there. And yeah, that is pretty much it for the whole song. I know I didn't go from scratch in this video, but hopefully you still learn a lot of new things. So yeah, now let's actually have a listen to the finished result. Enjoy. And so yeah, that is the full track. If you wanna see the full version, I will probably finish this and put it on SoundCloud or somewhere. And check out Skillshare as well if you wanna learn more about music theory or music production in general. They are a great site to check out. And the first thousand people who click the link will get a free trial, so link below. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.